So when we talk about uh, international brands perspective of India, I would like to emphasize that this is rather the other way around. It is India's perception towards the international brands that influences and changes international brands perspective towards India. So uh, I'll, I'll take an example from our own journey. We entered India in 1993. That was the time when there were very few international lifestyle premium brands in India. Uh, the customer base was low. Uh, and that was further restricted for polo category for us. And this was our perspective for international brands in India at that time. Now the exposure to international markets and international brands has completely changed the Indian scenario in the next decade. Now today's Indian customer are global citizens with great aspirations in life. The brand affinity, the brand consciousness is at all time high. Now recognizing this, lot of new international brands are entering India like never before despite the uh, economic slowdown. Now, at the same time, I would also like to mention that India has its own cultural, climatic and geographical nuances which restrict any international brand to consider India as one market. It's actually a combination of a lot of markets. So have you ever wondered why white has higher offtake in southern part of India or how north responds very quickly to new categories? So the market scenario and the international brand's perspective towards India has now completely changed. Um, we entered India in 1994. And that's when we launched Baskin Robbins in India. And uh, prior to that, we owned uh, the brand called Quality. Okay, I'm sure everyone's aware of it. It's, it was quite a household name. In fact, it still is. And at that time, we sold it to uh, Unilever, uh, which was then Hindustan Levers. And uh, because obviously, we, uh, we couldn't run two brands simultaneously. And it's been like uh, almost 20 years now, and we have over 500 stores. In fact, 512 to be precise. Uh, hopefully, we should add another 40 by the year end. Um, we've already, we should be opening 42 uh, by the end of uh, September. So, I mean, you just extrapolate that. I think we have a healthy pipeline. Uh, even in terms of uh, cities, I think we've uh, managed to penetrate the cities. In fact, uh, I think uh, from an uh, India perspective, I think that's what international brands should look at. Uh, India is so diverse, both geographically and demographically that uh, today there's uh, as much potential in tier 2 and tier 3 cities than tier 1 cities. But most of our business uh, typically is, uh, you know, out of the over 120 cities that we are in, uh, is in the top 20 cities. And that contributes to about uh, almost 60% of our business. So our focus uh, primarily this year and the next year would be to consolidate um, our presence in these uh, 20 cities. Because I think um, it also helps you in terms of economies of scale. Um, um, you know, uh, it's, it's uh, uh, better uh, management of resources. You can deploy resources even in terms of, um, I think, uh, manpower supervision, etc. It's, it's much better rather than having an entire battalion and army. Um, well, challenges are plenty in uh, food and beverages. Uh, we just had uh, Gujarat totally flooded, so all our stores are shut. Yeah. Uh, recession is also not helping us too much. Uh, the costs have gone through. Having just come out of that round of uh, challenges or the journey of challenges, there are many aspects that what how uh, foreign investors or for investment from foreign countries can look at it. Perhaps the biggest apprehension is clarity of the legal system. Um, it has been observed that even if the FDI has come through, it is only in the news, not on paper. So uh, foreign investors are apprehensive as to what is next, or is it going to change with a change of gov government, if at all? I would believe that clarity and transparency would play a great role. 